Hey everybody, welcome back to Psychedelic Stories. Your host, Wavy Davy here, here to blow your mind and undo your mind. Today we're in beautiful Columbus, Ohio, here for the Okeechobee Music Festival. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> Then the guy freaks out, he's like, gets his baggie, looks at his baggie, looks at his spoon, another big bum. Another big bum. Looks at the baggie one more time, another big bum. So one time, so I, I'm, I'm going out, my friend texts me like week two of quarantine. He's like, hey, I'm bored. I'm like, so am I. I have 11 grams of mushrooms. Do you want to like, you know, get that going? He's like, yeah. Word. So we split 11 G's. So like what? Like five and a half each? So like we're fucking going hard. I have the bag in my hand and I'm just munching them like chips. Uh I weigh it afterwards. I'm I'm eight grams in. I'm like, I'm dude, I'm fucked. I'm hammered. Like I'm done. Uh Like I'm eight grams in. He's like, hey, do you want to take a dab? I'm like, of course. Why not? Right. Why not? I'm hammered. Like, dude, it's quarantine. It's corona. It's not real. So I, when I tell you, I ripped that dab. Have you guys seen the new Spider-Man? Yeah. Whenever he's like, ah, you know, I literally went into the goblin dimension. <laughs> when I tell you the goblin dimension, like, it's just literally just purple. Like, I ripped the dab, it's purple. I'm like, no, I sprint to the shower, I'm done. Like, I'm in the goblin dimension for now. Like, I'm talking, I'm talking to Terrence McKenna, like, I'm, I'm out. I'm out for an hour and a half. And what did you learn in the goblin dimension? What I learned, man, what didn't I learn? I'm saying some of it, some of it's here, some of it's not here. Like I can't, I can't verbally express most of it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows what I'm talking about here. Goblin dimension. Yeah, uh, you're busy. Give us your best William Defoe face to the camera here. Take the glasses off. Ah. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. You heard that from Parker Savage. Word up. Base Nectar is going to end the war between Russia and Ukraine. If Base Nectar tries, I hear there's some shit going on with Base Nectar's lead artist, but if they try and they really put their efforts towards it, they could end the war right now. Um, last time I was at Oki, actually, um, I was at, I think, Base Nectar. I was just tripping balls, and I'm looking at the sky, and I see some fucking... Like, it looked like a meteor. I thought it was a spaceship or something, like a, like a nuke or something like that. And it was coming straight at us. And I was like staring at it for a while and then I thought maybe I was tripping balls. I look around and everyone's staring at it. And I was like, damn, we're about to die. I guess this is it. And I, I'm just staring at it for like, like two songs of a bass nectar set. I don't know if you've been at Bass Nectar, but that shit is like insane, dude. I was tripping balls. And I was looking at this thing in the sky, and then out of nowhere, it explodes. And I was like, shit, we're safe. We got Bass Nectar watching out for us. So the meteor was coming down, it was about to end all existence, and he just threw a dub dub and a wub wub into the sky and busted into people. He felt like that. He was- and do you think, it, you know, if Vladimir Putin had just poofed a little bit of acid in his use, you think he would really be doing all this stuff? Literally one time with some acid, preferably some mushrooms in my opinion. Oof and those? If he was on any of that shit, he just looked at the world, it, he would understand he's fucking, he's tripping too hard, you know? Why why take over the world, you know? We're chilling. I agree, I, I think most people would agree that Putin is indeed tripping too hard. So we're here with the kids of Okeechobee, nobody parties harder than them. Alright, so what's, what's going on kids? <laughs> Good, nothing really. What about you? We're just chilling, playing football. All right, and you having a great time out here? Yeah, amazing. What do you What do you like best? Uh, probably, probably the music. Yeah. Music. Yeah, agree. What's your What's your favorite artist that you've seen here so far? Um, I have two, 1788 and Of the Trees. Okay, nice, nice. I have two as well, Rez and Yeti. Okay, and how long you kids been uh, coming to festivals? Uh, this is my second one. Wow. Just uh, hippies in the making, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, if you see a big old guy with balloons come by, you tell him go away. You tell him go away, bad man. You tell him go away. All right. All right. Here, go long for me. All right. You know, I used to be a football star back in the day. That was a bad throw. Um, 
last year, my friend was out of whippets. Can I talk about whippets over here? Yeah. Completely out of whippets, and our homeboy had a box, and he was like, I'm going to see how much I can charge this man for a box of whippets. Uh -huh. They're going back and forth, 100, 150, 200, 250. Uh -huh. Got him up to 250 dollars. 50 pack. Yep. No, 25 pack. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you for the people who uh, were contemplating going to Okeechobee that they didn't make it this year, what can you tell them about Okeechobee? Uh, this is um, one of those life-changing experiences you cannot oh. miss out. Have to come. I've been here. This is my second time. Life-changing. You have to come. Hi, we're here with Dixie. Big Dix in the house. Big Dixie you're here. All right, what are you going to tell us, Big Dixie? All right, so my first festival, Okeechobee, 2017. I'm like 18 years old. I'm driving in. I'm like 10 minutes away from the entrance, and a truck crosses in front of me. I total my car. My engine fucking spewing fluids. There's fucking black smoke. I My airbag didn't go off. I was going like 70 mile an hour. I slammed into my shit. I refused the ambulance because I wanted to come party. I got all my shit out of my car. The tow truck took that bitch away. The cops took all my drugs. I got, I hitched a ride. They dropped me off inside. I set up camp and I dropped like three tubs of acid. I went right into Wiz Khalifa. And I lost my fucking mind. I was so injured from the wreck. I was tripping so hard. I went back to camp and ended up passing out on a peak of like three fucking tabs because I was like freaking out so hard. And then 2020 comes around. Okeechobee asks us to tell him how we how they changed you. I hit him up. I tell him about my experience. I tell him that no matter how much pain I was in, the injuries, no matter what the shit I went through, my car was gone, all my shit was gone. I came in and had the fucking time of my life. I went to festivals every fucking couple months since then. I fucking had the greatest time and I told them about it. They gifted me a free VIP ticket last year, told me to come and have a good time with my friends when I wasn't gonna make it. And I've been every year since. I'll never miss another Okeechobee run. I fucking love it. You know, I think there's something real beautiful going on now. I think similar to what happened in the 60s and 70s, there's a revolution going on now, at least in the last 10 years, these festivals. What do you, what do you think? I think you're completely right. Like, this is Woodstock, but healthy. It's healthy and loving, and it's beautiful, and it's not as dirty, and it's safer, and we're all here having a good time, and you don't hear of many bad things happening because everyone's here looking out for each other, and I think it's just become safer, more loving, more inspiring. I think it's fucking amazing. Like, there's fucking, like, 50,000 people here man like all right what's your name sir peter all right what's your name ma'am casey all right peter and casey all right we'll start with you peter what's your best psychedelic story probably an electric forest during the space jesus and liquid stranger back-to-back -back set we saw one guy kind of get down to his bare ass really having a bad time but thankfully the crowd was able to, random people in the crowd it was really amazing came and just kind of came to his rescue and just got him the fuck out of there these people had no idea who the, who this guy was at all and they helped him. And it is just one of the most inspiring things I have seen at a festival so far. Just like, strangers helped him. Yeah. Oh, God. oh. All right, we're here with uh, one, of the, one of the fine members of security here. He's keeping us safe. What's your name, sir? Yes, Chris Carter. All right, Chris Carter, and how'd you get this gig? Yeah, um, a friend of mine actually referred me, so they just kind of needed extra men, so this came out here, you know. Uh, securing our perimeters is doing our thing. Here's my, my best question for you, all right? All right, so, you know, you're doing your job, and you see some guy, he's trying to make it over the fence. You know, that's a no-go, obviously. He didn't pay for his wristband. All right, so you're about to stop him, and you realize he's covered head to toe in shit. Like, he, he's, he's brought this out, and he's going to get over that gate. Now, you can tackle him or you cannot. He's covered in shit. What are you doing here, my buddy? Honestly, <laughs> that's actually crazy. Um... Honestly, I don't know how I'm, I don't know, man. I probably have to like trip him up or some, you know, get get call call my boys, you know, try to take care of it the most necessary way possible for sure. So you're not, all right, we're over here with the guys over at Headcount, a great organization. Tell me what the organization's about. So Headcount is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and what we are about is getting people registered to vote. Uh, we use the power of music and democracy, fuse them together, and register people to vote at concerts. So we've been doing this since 2004. Recently, we hit 1 million registered voters. We partnered with Ariana Grande, Dead & Company, uh, Billie Eilish, all kinds of artists. So we're here at Okeechobee trying to register people to vote. And why do you think that's important? Because, you know, it's everybody needs to be have the opportunity to use their voice, right? Everyone should have the chance. 
at least to, to register. And and the thing is, too, is we're trying to remove some of the, uh, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like mailing it in, right? So we try to eliminate that middle step, make it easier for people to get registered. We partner with different companies and different causes sometimes, too. Like, like over in... in uh, we have um, Participation Row where we brought a, uh, some local nonprofits from Okeechobee County and we're giving them a voice. We're telling people to go listen to their mission, see the work that they're doing in the area to kind of give a boost to some of those local nonprofits. Okay, I think, I think it's a beautiful thing what you guys are doing. So real quick, I hear you guys got to dance? Oh, yes, we do. Okay, let's do it. Okay. I'll try, I'll, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Five, six, seven, Vote! Vote! Vote or die! Uh, my best story was um, going to the showers and um, raiding my girlfriend in there. What can you? Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, how was it? Are <laughs> 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 with Remy, everybody? Now, now a little background for my Remy here. I was on my way out of the festival earlier. He was on his way in. Didn't go too well for him as he tried to run past security and they tackled him. Tell me about why that happened, sir. All right, so I walked in and. Security's been lax the whole time, and then there was two guys there, and they were bitches. Security, they were bitches. They bitches. Bitches. So, so they he looked at it, and I said, "That's just candy. It was just candy." And then uh, I had some papers with me, uh -huh. yeah, and uh, and they said, "Hey, why are you have it in a back in a, in a backwoods?" And then they, they they saw the CBD. I said, "It's just CBD." And then um, they took it all. They took everything. Yeah. So then uh, when they took everything, I walked back and I asked them, can I pay you for it? You know, let me give you, like, why the fuck are you taking your job so seriously? We're all here. We're having a good fucking time, you know? Right, right. So, so, so I said, let me pay you for it. He said, nah. So I walked back and I handed my stuff to my friends and I was like, hey, take this. So I took it and I said, yo, um, and I grabbed it in my hand. Right. And then, but then, and I was going to get away with it. I was going to get away with it. But some random guy grabbed me like a monkey or some shit. Wasn't even security, just a random guy. Nah. And, and it was just a random guy. And then they took my shit and said, you have to go. But I'm still here. He's still here. They can't keep running me down. And, and that happened. Uh, somebody gave me a spoonful of cake. And for the last like three hours up until now, up until this interview, I was gone. And in the lab, I was like wavy. Now I'm back. And we're here ready for Meg and somebody else. We're about to I love somebody else. That's my favorite yeah. <laughs> We're going to go crazy. Yep. We pulled him out of the K-hole just for the interview. As soon as this interview is done, he's going right back in that camp. That's crazy that you guys saw that, though. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. A little bit of a spectacle. So, so my, my friend saw it, too. And it was like, oh, shit, somebody's running. And it was like, oh, that's Remy. And it was me. It was me running. Yeah. I would have gotten away with it, too. That's the fucked up part. If it wasn't for those meddling looks. Fucking meddling looks. Uh, and, and, and don't forget, drugs are bad. Yeah, drugs are bad. We don't recommend bringing them in, but if you got to bring them in, when in doubt, gooch it out. Yeah, don't do weed. CBD is okay. Uh, anything legal is okay. Yep. Yeah. Anything legal is okay? Uh, everything legal is okay. You can have a bunch of nitrous. I, is, that, is that legal? Yeah, I think it's legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on, brother. You know what I said? I said, today's going to be the best fucking day ever. All right, we're here with Taylor Made from Hetty Made Apparel. Okay, now, all right, well, tell us first about that. What's Hetty Made Apparel? Hetty Made Apparel is a clothing brand that looks to influence people for positive attitudes, positive mind states, good morals, and good vibes. We like to give back to the community. We like to influence good projects such as donation projects for environmentally friendly causes and so on and so forth. And we also like to build a community where we can uplift artists and unknown artists to higher higher values and higher expectations so we like to build a community where we can uplift a lot of unknown artists and kind of basically provide a good space for everybody in the music festival scene okay and tell me your your journey so far has been you know with this with this company and whatnot 
Uh, basically, I started hand designing apparel with sacred geometry stencils that were hand drawn and hand cut by a close friend of mine. He's one of my tattoo artists. I actually hand cut some of mine myself. And after a while, there's only so much I can do in a day. So I started collaborating with all these different artists, right? And featuring their art digitally printed on apparel so that we can feature them and get their names out there more rather than just me, myself. So we're trying to build a little bit of a collaborative community to uplift these artists that are struggling in the community to bring them to where we think they should be. Okay. Astro, he's the man. He's coming out with some beautiful Okeechobee art. This is probably one of the best Okie symbols I've seen. I mean, I don't know about you, but I fucking love it. So this is actually my fifth Okeechobee. I've done every single one of them. Um, it's an honor and it's a blessing to be here. I love creating stuff for kids to sit down and get cozy and sleep on the grass too. So you got this wonderful eight foot span Four ways around is 32 feet. So each part, instead of writing Okeechobee on one, that's a lot of letters, parts of it, highlighting parts of it, each part of the festival. Okay. So if we do a little walk around, you'll see I have stuff that denotes certain waypoints here. Because I think that's a nice thing to kind of like highlight that some people come here for the main stages, some people come for Incendia, or Chungo, or like Frick Frack, or like Aquachobi. Some people come for this festival and get like hamburgers and corn dogs. Oh. oh, that was dirty. So like, you know, I come out here, I have a lot of fun. I like to paint. I paint a lot of festivals. I thoroughly enjoy this. Uh -huh. You know, I like to create stuff that people could sit back and just like, I'll be your trip advisor. The festival got ooh. So, as I'm still working on this, I'm gonna throw what looks like, I guess, like incendious domes, maybe some fire. And then you got the E. -E. Hello, alien up there. Cause you know, some people like go out to the J U N G L E. So, you know, this is the Jungle 51. Yep, yep. So like, be an alien. Right? And then you know, CH, oh snap, it's Aqua Yep, yep. Uh, oh, yeah, that. Right? And we got these nice people here. Hello. It's a good place for sits. Yeah, right? For and then, oh snap, it's this new Jack Swirl. That's a little trickery. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. It right? comes full circle, but really it comes full cube. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's hip to be square. <laughs> We're here with quite a big goon squad here. All right, we're just going to go down the track. So tell me about your Okeechobee experience so far. It has been wonderful. It's my first time here. It's like, I, you know what I love about it? What do you love about it? Not just the music, which is phenomenal, uh -huh. but like all the other cool stuff, like getting some bamboo tea and going and doing some yoga. Nah. I called something. Our group is. Okay, what's your, what's your group called? Hey, you want, no. No, let's get it. Let's no. get it. Let's get it. No, let's no, get it. that's. You don't want to be. Okay, chill. Hey, Logan, Chris. Shit squad. We're shit gang. Shit gang. Shit gang. Shit on the floor. No, we shit big and we shit hard, and you heard it here first. If you don't and you smelled it there second. <laughs> okay, okay, that Jake is. Anyways, all I gotta say is that if you don't poop regularly, you're gonna have your tummy hurt, and then you're gonna have a bad if festival. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get healthy bowel movements and happy lifestyles. You guys are right. I'm gonna tell you something. I actually, Electric Forest 2019, you know, I had to use the bathroom. I was on ketamine. I was like, you know, I'm not going in that porta potty. I ain't doing it. I couldn't do it. I had a problem in the morning. I, I, I didn't go. I, I should I should have took your lesson from the shit squad. Did you poop yourself? You huh? you poop yourself? Right. Look, I'm not gonna say yes or no, but uh, you maybe you didn't poop at all. Maybe you didn't poop at all. Do you, you want to? Do, do you want to join shit gang? Festival. Do you want to join shit gang? Shit gang? Are you? I, I'm, I'm part of shit gang. Part of shit gang. Shit gang. Shit gang. Shit gang. Shit gang. Shit gang. Shit gang.